In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the different ways we can import data into the software. We're also going to take a look at some of the common issues you may encounter and how to go about managing and solving them. In short, there are three different ways we can bring data into the software. One is to open it as a new file, which will automatically create a job space at the same time. Secondly, is to import the new vectors into an existing file that's already been created. And thirdly, is just to drag and drop it into an existing workspace. So first of all, let's go across now and open an existing file. So if I select that, we'll then be faced with the files that we're going to import. And we're going to take a look at the imported vectors demo.dxf. But just before that, let's take a look at some of the other file options we have available to us. We have the standard vcar files, which are .crv. And with Aspire, we would have .crv3d if there was 3D content. We have DXF and DWG files, which typically come from engineering packages. And also we have EPS and AI, which typically come from graphics-based packages. We have PDF files, and we also have the scalable vector graphics, which is an XML-based vector image format for two-dimensional graphics as well. SVG, DXF, and DWD will contain layer information. If we import a PDF that has multiple pages, each of those pages will come in as a different layer too. Okay, so let's import our imported vectors demo.dxf and open that. Save changes now because we want to create a new job space and we can immediately see the vectors shown full screen. I'm just going to zoom out slightly now and just show the way it's been located with, res with respect to R00. So as you can see here, um, we have this sort of dark gray line which denotes the offset of the original part from its location. So you can see that the vectors were exported um, from the original CAD package at a distance from the X, Y, 0. And that has been replicated in our software by showing this as an X, Y offset from the lower left hand corner of the vectors. If I am to switch that off, essentially that's removing the offset and the bottom left hand corner of the workspace is now our X, Y, 0. Now, we currently have a job space that is just the same size as our vectors and we may wish to add a board around that. So if we come up to the job size, you can see it's currently approximately 9.3 inches square. But of course we can now increase that size. So I'm gonna go 10 in X and we'll also do 10 in Y. And you'll see that it's increase the distance in positive x and positive y to be 10 so it's actually just added a border on two edges the furthest from the x y datum and what a good way to actually add in a universal boundary is to temporarily change your x y datum to be the center of the workspace so i'm going to select the center now okay come back up to the job size and i'm going to add 12 and then 12 for Y and OK that. And you can immediately see that we've added an extra inch on all of the four boundaries. And we can come back into the form and just change the lower uh, left hand corner to now be our 0, 0. OK, before we take a look at importing a set of vectors into an existing file, let's take a look at the layers that we have in this part. So I'm going to hit the drop down on layers and we can see that we have three layers, layer 0, layer default and a layer red. Layers default and red clearly have information on denoted by the blank page with some uh, vectors drawn on them but layer zero it is a blank page therefore there is no information uh, pertained on that layer. I'm going to switch all three layers on now and we're going to switch on the default layer. You can see that's uh, a black layer and is not currently active. Okay if I then switch on the red layer uh, we can see it's the red vectors there and this is currently the active layer so that three layers were included with the dxf file okay so now at this point we're going to move forward and uh, create a new file and then import that dxf into that existing workspace so we're going to go across now and create a new file and in this case we will create it as 12 by 12. We're not so worried about the thickness here, we're just going to import in 2D vectors. And I'm going to make my lower left position, uh, my 00 in the lower left hand corner. 
and with that now I have my blank workspace my zero zero in my bottom left hand corner and I'm going to move forward and import those port the vectors so I'm going to come back up and you can see that we've got a range of different options at the top there of which under file operations import vectors so I'm going to select that now which will bring up the form I can pick the same import vectors demo.dxf and that will be imported into the job now we can clearly see here that the original distance the xy offset from that lower left hand corner has been maintained um, in the same way that we saw it with the original file where we opened it native and it created the part so it's honored the xy offset that it was exported from with the original CAD package okay just like the previous example let's take a look at the layers that have been created and on the drop down there we can see that we have the same three layers layer 0 default and red but we also have an extra layer which is layer 1 this is due to the fact that when we first created the part it naturally creates a layer for all our 2d data to go onto which is called layer 1 and in this case I could actually delete that layer out and I could do the same with layer 0 as there's no data either so we're just left with two layers the default and the red layer okay so now we're going to start looking at really bringing in extra data on top of this existing file so what we're going to do now is go across and import some existing vectors into this job space so i'm going to import that and we're going to take imported vectors demo 2 and i'm going to open that up and it doesn't look like anything has happened and this is quite often the case where the vectors um, its position with respect to R00 is very much different to the existing package and hence they are completely off the workspace we're using. So the best thing to do is just to come up to the top menu and zoom active level to drawing limits. So I'm just going to hit that now and we can easily see there that we have some vectors in the top right hand corner, this snow white, which happen to be placed a long distance from our XY0 and that's because the original reference exporting package that's where they were located with respect to zero zero so let's what we now need to do is probably bring them down into our workspace which you can do either by pressing f9 on the keyboard or simply go into the transform objects align and possibly placing that in the center of the workpiece you can see now that's moved from the top right hand corner down into the workspace so I'm going to close that out now and simply we'll select that same zoom to active limits and we can see that we brought our snow white vectors down into our workspace. Now whilst that's highlighted if I click on it one more time it will take it into transform mode and then I'm just going to hover my left mouse key over the bottom right hand corner and I can pick that up and move that and I can move that into a more representative position. Okay, so now that we've imported the Snow White data and repositioned it, let's go up and take a look at the layers. You can see here that we've actually added an extra layer which happens to be called white and the vectors have been changed to be black. For any data that arrives into Vectric where that particular vector is white, it will be automatically changed to black, but the name of the layer will be maintained. In this case, it is white. Similarly, if I am to uh, switch off that layer white now, and you'll see that it's changed from being black to red. In other words, the active layer is, no current, is not currently being drawn. Therefore, if I copy and paste any vectors and they're being pasted onto the active layer, they will immediately disappear from the screen because the active layer is not being drawn. Similarly, we've got one layer, layer zero, which has no data on. If we did have multiple layers that had no data, one way to remove those layers easily is to switch off the layers that currently do have data. So only the layers without information are drawn and then right mouse key and say merge visible and it will merge all those layers into one, allowing you to easily delete those layers. So now we're gonna switch those back on and now we're going to take a closer look at the data on the screen and see if there are any outstanding issues that we might need to address before we come to machining. As we mentioned it's always worth taking a closer look at the vectors before we go on to do any machining. So with that I'm going to use the vector validator under the edit objects menu 
there is the vector validator which when we open it will allow us to search all the vectors to see if we have any particular issues that may need sorting out. So I've said search all and we can clearly see in the top left hand corner there may be one vector on top of another. We also have issues down in the bottom right hand corner where we may have a number of single vectors that could be joined into one and it looks to me maybe like these two elongated vectors could well be duplicates too. So that's indicating that I do need to address some of this. So I'm going to close down that form and actually come up to the top and say edit selection select all duplicate vectors. So with that now it's selected you can see here in the top left hand corner there is a purple dotted circle but that is on top of the underlying black circle so it just shows a sort of broken purple and we also have the same here with these two long vectors here. Okay so with that whilst they're selected I'm going to right mouse key and say move to layer and do new layer and I'm just going to call this duplicates and I'm going to make that layer active as well and at present I need to now show those items um, have been moved across to this particular layer. So we're going to come up to the top menu here we can see that all five layers are currently on I'm just going to switch those off and we can see actually that the duplicates okay we can see there there are three items and if I now switch that off and switch on the other four we can see that we still have exactly what we thought we had at the start but clearly those three items that are on duplicates happen to be extra and we don't need them but in this case I will keep them on that duplicates layer in case I need to refer to them so now let's come and have a look at the remaining vectors that we have here and we now just have singles here which is good you can see that showing by the single purple dotted line but we also had a problem maybe that this square had intersections in the corner if we come back to the form we can see there's intersections here in the corners now they wouldn't be there if that was one continuous vector so it might be that we have single lines here and if I select those lines you can see they are singles and this would cause a problem maybe if we wanted to profile all the way around the job so with that now I'm going to select those four vectors together and come across to the edit objects menu and join open vectors now with that you can set your tolerance nice and low so it won't be modifying but essentially I've got selected vectors there are zero closed four open and the vectors after joining would actually be one vector so I'm going to join those all together and we can clearly see there now that we have one single vector okay so with that we've addressed most of the issues but it is always worth sometimes taking a closer look at the vectors and seeing if there is any refinement that can be done before we consider machining so we've got lots of vectors here at the top of Snow White you can see there's a very jagged edge to these and that's because they should be like that but of course we've got a nice vector here that should be smooth and suddenly we can see there are lots and lots of points on that so when we come to machine that it may be that we don't get a smooth finish or the machine may run a little slower so it would be worth us trying to refine this to get a better finish and possibly have the machine move quicker so with that if we come across to the menu now and we can pick up the fit curves to selected vectors to command which is under the edit objects menu if we select this now you've got curve fitting so fitting type do we want to fit circular arcs beziers or straight lines in this case it's probably not best to go for the straight lines or circular arcs given the sort of uh, sweeping nature of these curves and I'll go for the bezier curves command and I'm going to specify a tolerance there maybe I'll move this down to uh, one thousandth of an inch and I want to keep sharp corners we obviously want to protect that corner so we've got two straight edges and I'm going to preview that now and you can see that's dramatically to reduce the number of points down to just a few now what I will do is select the replace selected vectors and preview that and then OK that and now we're left with a single vector if I go into the node editing mode you can see that we just have a few points on that vector now and it's reduced those points to within the tolerance that are specified within the form so we've dramatically rationalized that vector into a farther far smoother vector before we consider machining okay so that draws to a conclusion here this presentation where we took a look at different ways we could import data 
into Vectrix software and how to approach moving it around, repositioning the job, being able to take a close look at any features or issues that we may have that need to be addressed before we can move things on and consider machining.